Yeah, Canada has been nuclear powered for a very long time and it all started here. So in this video, we're gonna go in a journey inside the heart of Canada's first nuclear power reactor. We go deep inside to explore the grandfather of the CANDU, also known as the CANDU, the Canada Deuterium Uranium. We were lucky enough to get exclusive access into the heart of this reactor, which means going deep inside a facility that's over 60 years old. Say hello to the NPD, the Nuclear Power Demonstration Reactor. Located on the traditional territories of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples. MPD is Canada's first nuclear reactor to supply electricity and it's a prototype demonstration reactor. Remember, this bad boy is the grandfather of CANDU reactor units running across the world. Now, this reactor served as a training facility for nuclear power operators as well as a hub to learn everything we need to know about heavy water moderated reactors. This reactor design would later evolve into what is now more popularly called the CANDU. Canada deuterium uranium, which are powering countries across the world like Canada, Argentina, South Korea, China, Romania, India, and Pakistan. Yes, those are all on my list of places to visit. But the real question is, where did it all start? Now, we can easily go back to the original iPhone generation one. But what about the can do? Let's take a tour inside this forgotten legend. Let's reignite those memories to commemorate that impact and travel back in time to a moment where Canada was racing to innovate and lead the frontier of technology, kind of reminiscence of what we're experiencing right now in the industry. Let's jump right into our reactor visit. So Mohamed Saleh and I got a chance to get ready for our first reactor site mission. We were on our way to Rolfton, Ontario, a 25 minute drive from Chalk River. Remember, this is a secure site, which you need to have an escort to be here. Uh, it's very safe and secure here. So driving up to the site, we got a stunning view of the reactor in all its glory. From the outside, this place doesn't look like a traditional reactor. It doesn't really have that large reactor dome you tend to see on other can -dos. And the reason why is simple. It's because the reactor itself is located deep underground. There's also this large red and white candy cane colored stack on the right hand side. Now remember, this reactor is not operational. It was shut down in 1987 after many decades of reliable operation. It's not fully decommissioned. However, preliminary decommissioning has occurred defueling and draining of systems, but much of the reactor and its systems, including piping, tanks and valves remain intact inside the plant. So it had been a real privilege and opportunity to get footage of this special facility. I just want to give a big thank you and shout out to Canadian Nuclear Laboratories to let us take a tour of this facility. CNL manages the NPD site on behalf of AECL, Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. Additionally, it's also a hub for hundreds of scientists and researchers who are conducting world-class research across the facility. So Mohammed and I also had the chance to explore all the other facilities on the CNL campus at our time there. So just a sneak peek that might be a future video. So let's jump right into the reactor. As you get into the reactor building, you're greeted by an empty hall. Echo, echo, echo. Yes, nothing is here at all. It's dark and all you hear is your voice echoing. Your first thought might be, where is this reactor? Well, it's underground below us. Now, this large hall was used by operators to store essential equipment for the reactor. And as you can tell, all of the equipment has been removed. Only minimal lighting is provided, reflecting the storage with surveillance nature of operations, which means the reactor is shut down and laid up. Fuel and heavy water have been removed from the site, and many of the systems supporting reactor operations have been removed from service. Now, the remaining operating systems support monitoring and inspection of activities, which allows operators to confirm that the facility is being safe stored. Next, the team prepares to go deep inside the reactor itself. This is the special moment, which includes wearing light personal protective equipment, also known as PPE in the industry, plastic overcoat. Getting this uh, coat on as PPE. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. We've got these handy gloves, booties to protect our shoes from dust and a stylish hard hat with a built-in flashlight. Remember this reactor facility is super safe to walk inside. At our first stop, we come across a rotating end shield, which is an important piece of reactor technology that provides operators and maintenance staff access to any of the fuel channels. All right, so what we're seeing right now is an end shield um, in, the, in the NPD reactor. An end shield basically is 
and the, at the end of a nuclear power reactor can do usually. But what's different about this one is that it spins, okay? And um, and why, why why did it spin? So it spun to give access to the different fuel channels that were in the reactor. And it was uh, through here that the single fuel channel replacements were carried out. So they were able to pull pressure tubes out of the reactor and into a flask, into a shielded flask and then reinsert a new pressure tube in to uh, replace that, that fuel channel. Interesting, and, and, and do, you, do you know if the, the replacement of pressure tubes here were similar to some of the refurb campaigns or like what was it, was it different methods that they were trying out here? It'd be uh, similar methods, but not on the same scale as the refurb. So it would have been closer to a single fuel channel replacement. Uh, they might replace one or two channels to do, uh, do metallurgy on the uh, different types of materials that were used for the different channels. And, uh, much of the same stuff that happens now with the operating reactors for uh, for scrapes, for deuterium ingress and that sort of thing. Nice. How many pressure tubes are in here, uh, by the way? 132 pressure tubes. 132. Nice. And right here, we're in the observation desk, uh, deck, or is this where the cranes used to, to come down to? So there's a couple of different cranes that were used. So the folks would actually go down into the room below us called the tube withdrawal room. and. Uh, the tubes would be received into a shielded flask and then there was a crane in the room above us and the, the flask would come up through the opening in the floor here, through an opening in the ceiling and then get sent off to Chalk River where the metallurgy would take place. Very nice. Awesome. Now, for those that don't know, fuel channels are located at the heart of the NPD reactor. These are long zirconium tubes that held nuclear reactor fuel while it's operating. It's very different than more traditional pressurized water reactors that have a large pressure vessel. The NPD has 132 of these fuel channels. Now, this rotating end shield also served as a gateway and test bed of the very first fuel channel replacement campaign. Yes, when candle reactors go through a 30 year life extension, called refurbishments, this is where specialized equipment and advanced engineering techniques are used to replace these fuel channels. It's not as easy as just ripping out these channels and putting new ones in. It requires development of several sophisticated techniques and tools to both remove and install these channels. It's pretty complex. It requires a lot of math, a lot of physics, and a lot of understanding of radiation science. The basic principles from techniques pioneered at NPD are used across CANDU fleets to this day. Yes, for those mega projects and multi-billion dollar projects happening right now, you can thank this nuclear power reactor. Now, while walking around the heart of the reactor, you come across many pipes, valves, components. Now, remember, this is a pretty normal sight to see when you're in a nuclear power reactor. A nuclear reactor is kind of like a living, breathing piece of technology. These pipes are like the veins and arteries of the reactor. They carry cooling water, service gas, different gases. The reactor itself is the heart, which heats up the water. These are orange pipes would have been service water um, and so so the valves would have been to you know allow access to different systems there are some pipes overhead too that was part of the emergency cooling water injection system ECI yeah so the uh, the dousing tank was outside so there was uh, there was dousing tanks in the boiler room and the reactor vault and then an emergency core coolant injection as well okay that could actually put demineralized light water right into the fuel channels all right so next is the control room this is where the magic happens control room traditionally has large panels and switches it's where nuclear operators control a nuclear reactor it's the brain of the nuclear power reactor although all of the equipment from this control room has been removed so yeah it's no secret that it's no longer here this is a shot of what the control room once looked like now here's a quick before and after of the control room when it was there and now here it is when it's decommissioned. The cabinets with the gauges and everything were on top of these uh, plywood decks here. So the cable space is underneath. So there's lots of holes. On these, these plywood boxes cover holes basically in the floor that led down. The whole station was controlled from in here. So covers those floors where all the cables went through. Now, remember, this is not an ordinary control room. This place is special since this is where operators trained to work on larger can-do power plants like Pickering, Darlington, and Bruce, where operators would have been sent to familiarize themselves with reactor control panels and operations. Now, before flow sheets were computerized, this is a physical flow sheet where operators used to indicate the status of valves and many other components. Pins would be placed on the sheet manually to show where a valve was closed or the status of a component. Here's a legend which shows how the system worked. It's cool to envision a time where operators would run up to the control room to update these flow sheets as the reactor was operating. Yeah, so before flow sheets were computerized, they, they had uh, <clears throat> pin boards like this. So every system in the station had its own flow sheet and the, uh, the pins that are in there record valve status. We actually had some folks come through here that used to work here and gave us the, uh, the legend 
for the valve status. So when, when the station was laid up, the operators that laid up the station would have put all these pins in and the, and the uh, pin colors correspond to, uh, to the position of the valves. It's also fascinating to see that the flow sheets are untouched from the moment this reactor was shut off decades ago. There's nothing left other than the control room once was, right? It's just, uh, it seems, um, it's an interesting energy here. What I've noticed is there's a lot of vents in this area, right? Is, is that for a reason? That would have been just for climate control in here. I think just from, from the older equipment, uh, with a lot of heat given off by it. In, in terms of this design, is there uh, the fuel bays? Are, are they downstairs They're beneath us? Below the original uh, floor that we were in, where we came in underneath okay. the reactor hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all, all the nuclear components were underground. Interesting. All right, so next we check out the new fuel port where fresh fuel would come in onto the site and be placed inside of this port. The fueling machine would take it from here and insert the fresh fuel into the reactor. Now here's the hydraulic drive that moves the carriage from the fueling machine back and forth, so north and south for the orientation of the reactor over here. What's interesting to know is that the NPD fueling machines descend into the reactor vault from above, which is unique to the current generation of Candus in which fueling machines machines come into the reactor vault from below. The reactor demonstrated the capability of being refueled online. And this is an important feature of the Candu reactor. Unlike traditional PWRs and BWRs, which need to be shut down to replace fuel, Candus can refuel while the reactor is operating. And this technique was really developed at the NPD. What's the mechanism here? Is this a motor or? So this is, um, this is a hydraulic drive that okay. moves the carriage for the fueling machine back and forth, uh, so north and south for the orientation of the reactor here. And uh, the rest of this system would be uh, permissions on, on valves uh, sort of thing so that the fueling machine could, could uh, home into the right area. Cool, this is the fueling, uh, fueling carriage, okay. And this holds the fueling machine, right? It does, yeah, fueling machine suspended from it. Decking. Yeah, oh, see okay, the little okay. checker plate down there. Yeah, because I see the operator panels and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so even smaller than I thought. Yeah, wow. yeah, it's pretty small. Wow. So NPD used about two bundles a day, and it'll hold six months worth of fuel. Two bundles a day? Yeah. All right. Hey, friend, so we are right above the spent fuel pool, or where it used to be. Okay, so you can see out from the camera a little bit of haziness here, but uh, you can see uh, the outline of it. Uh, so, um, Two bundles a day. That's two bundles a day during full right. power operation. That's not much. That's not much, no. Compared to about two channels a day for uh, for the commercial units now. Cool. Here it is. Okay, here? yeah, follow Katie in. So grab the side of the door to, uh, to head up and uh, just watch your head as you go through. Stay low until you're right in the room. Next, the team keeps going down deep into the reactor. Yeah, we got lots more to check out. Remember, much of the reactor is located underground. Thus, our adventure continues 85 feet deep. That sump is 85 feet. The bottom of the sump is 85 feet below ground level outside. Okay, so we're underground now. We're way underground now, yeah. We are, uh, we are about um, 65 or 70 feet underground right now. Oof. Yeah. That's right. Right, so we, we, we are underground, friends, and uh, because this reactor is underground, um, 85 feet below ground level, so you're right. All right. You just broke, <laughs> broke the NPD, man. <laughs> Next, we come across the moderator dump tank, which was part of a safety system at the NPD. In case of an emergency, the moderator water from the reactor is drained rapidly into this big tank, which quickly stops the reaction. This was your system, right, at the current? This, this was my system. Yeah, because you were on the A side then, eh? Yeah, I was okay. on the A side. So the control system is almost exactly the same. Um, helium balance line, oh, right? Yeah. This, these are the helium lines going up, and the color coding is the same too, right? Brown for helium and, and pink for heavy water. So this is the, the dump tank right here, this is where all the inventory of heavy water would, would dump in through these valves right here and these pipes if you want to shut down the whole entire core and reactor system. So as an engineer who used to work in there, now I see it in my own two eyes. 
Now here's a historical image of the very same dump tank being manufactured and then being installed inside the reactor core, 85 feet deep underground. Yes, that's where we're standing right now. So these pumps are a super important part of the reactor as they are used to push water throughout the primary heat transport circuit, which keeps the reactor nice and cool. Left hand side, check that out, pretty big. Actually, it's pretty small compared to what's out there right now in the other stations. Now, along the way, we also saw this large steam generator as well. It's a big metal component, which is used to make steam. Steam ultimately is then transferred to spin turbines and ultimately used to create electricity. Now walking up close to the feeder pipes, it was surreal to see the first generation of a technology that is unique to can do reactors. Feeder pipes are used to carry water both into the reactor core as well as away from the core once water heats up. All right, so getting a peek of the feeders here. All right, uh, which would be in a can-do reactor, but uh, here in the NPD, the reactor core is just on the other side. Let's check out the feeders, guys. There's something I can check out. It's, yeah. There's, there's coordinates right there. Oh, oh okay. Right there. Yeah, so those correspond to the channel that yeah. Uh, the channel, yeah. Yeah, the, the feeder is serving. It looks like a puzzle. Zoom in a little bit. Nice. This is cool. Now the question is, what's next for this facility? What will happen to the site? I got a chance to ask Project Director Katie the same question. For NPD, we've evaluated a number of decommissioning options and the option that we're pursuing right now is in situ disposal. So essentially leaving everything that's left here, all the metal components, the above grade superstructure, which will be demolished and placed in open spaces below grade, in place. We would fill up any other empty space with grout and cap and cover the facility. Essentially, we would use the concrete box that's already here, the existing facility structure, as a cell, a waste disposal cell, and we would dispose of the material in place. All right, so walking through this facility, I reflected back to how a country with the fraction of the population and economy of its neighbor, without enrichment technologies or manufacturing capabilities to build large pressure vessels, would go on to design and build its very own nuclear power reactor. Despite these odds, the nation had a vision. It leveraged its experiences in heavy water moderation and its large uranium resources, which with the combination of political willpower and its scientific community would push forward to build Canada's first nuclear power project that will go critical in April 11th, 1962, around 60 years ago. Now, walking through the 60 year old facility brought me back that renewed sense of pride as a nuclear professional. Walking through that facility really did help me realize the level of excellence that goes into both building, operating, and eventually decommissioning a nuclear power reactor. All the engineers, operators, specialists, that are dedicating their lives to this project will forever be remembered through the reactors that succeeded NPD and which are now supplying over 60% of Ontario's clean electricity. Those units, Pickering, Darlington, Bruce, that are running around the clock. There are thousands of nuclear professionals across the world that are employed right now because of this resource. Continuing to operate, maintain and refurbish our existing reactor units, we owe a lot to that legacy of Canada's first nuclear power reactor and all those that contributed to making that project successful. This place helped propel Canada to the international stage to become one of a handful of tier one nuclear nations to master the craft of controlling that powerful nuclear fission reaction and creating electricity, the lifeblood of modern day civilizations. Mohammed and I are lucky and grateful to CNL for giving us access to walk through this facility. This really was once in a lifetime chance to explore the NPD before it's decommissioned forever. It was indeed a rare opportunity and one that we cherish. Thanks again for everyone who made this possible. And on to our next adventure. In the comments below, please do let us know which reactors you'd like us to check out next. Right now in Canada, there is that renewed ambition of mega projects and a future of a next generation of reactor technologies like small modular reactors. So I felt that same energy that was once at NPD. Right now, that spark has been reignited. And I'd love to hear from you guys and your thoughts and your comments. If you did enjoy this video, please do check out some of my other vlogs where I tour nuclear facilities across the world. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks again. Take care.